Alright everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to create your own NAS, or Network Attached Storage Device, with Ubuntu Server. Now I know there's a couple of pre-made distros you could use, like Open Media Vault or FreeNAS, but hey, sometimes you might just want to create your own thing, so in this video I'll be going through how to do just that with Ubuntu Server. Now I'll be showing you a lot of it on the device that I've actually built, but to start with I just need to show you a couple of bits in the virtual machine. This is stuff I've already long passed, and because I've got mine up and running. Well, I'm not showing you the whole installer, but well, it's a text-based installer, it's not too difficult. Uh, but down the end you get a list of choose which software you want to install. So from that list I'm going to take the OpenSSH server and the Samba file server. And press enter and let it do its job. Right, back to what I was talking about though. So, we're creating a NAS with Ubuntu server. I've written a help guide here on the steps you need to go through. Uh, there's quite a lot here. To show you all the terminal commands that you need. To show you how to set up some of the Usenet components, so such as a SAB NZBD downloader, a Sickbeard, and Couch Potato. I'm giving you some example config files. So, we've got Samba and the init scripts for Sickbeard and Couch Potato. Now I've written the specs for my system here, so it's actually a pretty lightweight because it's just an AMD, or well, it's the E450 CPU, so it's this new generation lightweight processors. So it's 1.6 gigahertz dual core, put 8 gig, 8 gig of RAM, three three terabyte hard drives. Oh, yeah, a lot of storage space, and I run the whole system off a 16 gig USB flash drive. Now it probably sounds really weird to actually run an operating system off a flash drive, but with creating a NAS it's actually ideal, because you want your hard drive for your data, not necessarily for the operating system. And since, uh, since Ubuntu server is pretty lightweight, because yeah, you're not actually running a desktop on it, come to that in a moment, you're not actually running a desktop on it, so it hasn't really got a lot to do. So perfectly fine to run it off a USB drive. Yeah. As mentioned here, yes, it doesn't have a desktop, so the majority of interaction is done via web GUIs. Oh, let's just see what this is asking me. Oh yeah, yeah, just install a grub loader. Yep. Yeah, so majority of interaction is done via web GUIs. I've got a program called Webmin running on the server, so it does a lot of the admin tools for me, provided there. So it's really nice and simple to use. Right, so steps have gone through. Which I'll point out here, when you're installing when you're installing the operating system, if you're installing it to a USB flash drive, you need to disconnect your hard drives. It's because the installer will default to putting grub on the hard drives, and then it gets all mixed mixed up and confused when it can't find where the operating system is. So to keep it simpler there, disconnect the hard drives, install it onto the flash drive, install the operating system onto the flash drive, then reconnect the hard drives and boot back up. All being well, you get a login screen, login with your username and password. So this is the point I'm at in this virtual machine. So put username in and password. And you'll see we've got the IP address of the system. Oh, damn. I need to set that as a bridged network connection, which I'll do in a moment. Right, so first first thing I want to do is check for updates. So and let's just move that to the side and run that above me. So sudo apps get... Ah! <laughs> Bitrate's sped up considerably. All right, then do apps get dist upgrade. Yeah. That's a good idea to do that at the beginning, so get like the kernel update done and out of the way, and then we'll get on with configuring the system. So next we'll set a static IP address on the NAS. So do that, sudo nano etsy network interfaces. And we need to comment out that line. And then type it in as I've shown there in the guide. You need to change the IP addresses for your network. I'll just give an example here of using 100. I prefer to use Google's DNS server, I find it a lot better than my ISP's DNS server. Some people might not like Google because they record all your activity. 
doesn't bother me though. They know just about everything about me anyway, so what's a bit more information I'm going to tell them. Anyway, press Control X, press Y, and yeah, we're going to write that file. Now we're going to reboot, so sudo reboot. Now what we're going to do is put the server down and not have to sit in front of it anymore now. What we're going to do is log in remotely via SSH. So I've opened up a terminal on my system. And we're going to, ooh, before I do that, I do mention here you can set up the NAS's IP address for your lo local DNS lookup. So it saves you having to type out the IP address. I've already done that, so I'm just going to have to use the IP of this virtual machine. So we do SSH, so user at nas.local, be your username, so quid at, I'm just typing in the IP, as I said, I've already got nas.local allocated in my IP address, and I'm not using it for this demonstration. 62.100. For the first time, it can't be established. Do you want to add that fingerprint? Yes, we do. So type in yes. So then it needs a password. There we go, so now we're logged in remotely. And it makes it a bit easier. It makes it a bit easier. I no longer have to sit in front of the computer downstairs. I can sit upstairs and listen to music on here. That's good. So I'll go through a few of these commands here. So I've got an optional part here if we're going to use RAID. I'm not going to do that one right now. But I'll go through installing Webmin. Highlight and copy. Paste them in. So now we'll put this command in, wget to download the webmin deb file. Now it might change location if they do another update, but I'll, I'll try and keep this document up to date. But if it's changed and I haven't noticed, can someone just let me know please? Just pop a note in the description below. Right, next, install, so install that deb file. Now we'll reboot, because it's mentioned in that you read ahead will be reprofiled on the next boot. So we'll just force a reboot. So no reboot. Now go to your internet browser and we'll navigate to that page. So that's 192.168.62.100 for mine. And on port 1, no, 10,000. Oh, and we'll need to do it over HTTPS, colon forward slash. So there it goes, connection is untrusted. Uh, so just need to go, I understand the risks, add exception, could permanently store this exception, not going to, I'm not going to this time because this is just a demonstration, so you to confirm the security exception, log in with your username, could remember the password, again not going to this time. Right, so this is the webmin admin interface, so with this look at what processes are running, do some system configuration, webmin configuration, so there's a load of modules you can put on here. Configure the servers, so configure a Samba server, network settings, just a firewall, yeah, etc. etc. It's got loads of stuff on here. Uh, I've mentioned here about setting up a RAID. I'm going to find this quite difficult to demonstrate because I've already done one and don't have another one to do. So. What I'm going to do actually is to swap over to my live NAS. So I just get a shortcut in here. Right, so this is the real system. So on the hardware, I've got Linux RAID. So you can create the RAID with this. So we're going to create a uh, RAID 5 is good. Mind you, it says there's no partitions available, so I can't demonstrate it. What I can do though is show you the settings for the one that I've created. So you can see I've got three drives on it and I've chosen to mount it at this point, media slash rdisk. What shall I go through next? So I mentioned that if you don't want to actually set up a RAID, you could create a single just use a single hard drive instead of a RAID. So creating the shared folders done all that on mine already. Fairly self-explanatory, just create folders. 
where you're setting up the shares, but depending on how you would like it to be accessed, you've got a couple of choices there. You've got read write access for one user, or and read only access for everyone else, or you can do read write ac read write access for everyone. I found it a bit difficult to set up with permissions in Linux. That's the best sort of compromise I could come up with. If you do it for one user, it's those instructions. If you read write access for everyone, it's that those instructions. So nobody, no group is access. So it's passwordless access there. Ah a Samba configuration. So config file included here. Just highlight everything. Copy on webmin. Go down to the servers. Samba file sharing. And it's edit config file. We can do just highlight everything that's there, control A, control V, then save. Simple. Go back to the share list. Then you need to scroll down and restart the Samba server. And you need to restart it any time you make changes on any of the shares. Alright, anything else to go through, anything else? So that's the Samba shares. Ah, the Usenet components. Optionally, if you do want to use the NAS to download files from Usenet, I find it quite a good way actually. A lot better than downloading torrents, quicker and safer. Only costs £10 a month to use unlimited download, unlimited bandwidth. Excellent, excellent. Um, fairly self explanatory on here. Just change the port numbers for what, what port you want to use. It doesn't matter really, as long as you're using one that isn't used for anything else. A uh, load of configuration for load of configuration parts you need to do. I'll just show you the GUI part if you're curious about it. The SAB. As you can see, I've downloaded a few files. Uh, just a few things. So if I'm adding files, add the NZB. I need to acquire the NZB files from search like I use NZB.su. So I acquire the files from here whatever I want really. So download the .nzb file then upload it to SAB. And just a quick look at the other programs I've shown, so Sickbeard. So that's automatically downloading all these programs. And Couch Potato for downloading the movies. Which I've not really got into using that yet, I just managed to put a few things in and that was about it really. Anyway, there you go. I hope you found that useful for, for creating your own NAS with Ubuntu Server. So thanks for watching. See you later.